Good afternoon everyone, I'm Baz Kinder and in today's Wellington 18 Minute Shorts I'm going to be highlighting some of the key reasons you might want to consider moving from Project Online to Project for the Web and I'll also suggest a few approaches for making the move then at the end I'm going to share details of how you can access a free consultation to discuss your migration from Project Online. Before that let's take a quick look at today's agenda. So today I'll start with a very quick intro to Wellington before then looking at the evolution of Microsoft Project over the years and a quick glimpse of what's coming in 2024. I'll then provide a few reasons why you may want to look at migrating from Project Online and a few options for doing just that. But at the end I'll let you know how you can access a free consultation to discuss making the move. And that's the agenda for today. Before I get into the main topic, I'm going to take a step back and introduce Wellington. And first up, I want to tell you about our service guarantee, and that is your project and portfolio management capability will be improved through our services, and that is a money-back guarantee. We've been around since 2001. We've got offices in the UK, Ireland, Spain, and India, but we do work globally to support our customers no matter where they are. And you can, of course, learn more by going to wellington.co.uk. Okay, let's get into today's topic. And the first thing I want to do is step through the evolution of project to understand where we're coming from in the first place. So, although it's not shown here, project sprang into life back in 1984, and that was at the same time as Ghostbusters, one of my favorite movies ever. And Project Online was then launched in 2013, and that's when Disney's Frozen was released, and the song Let It Go was seared into our brains, which was fun, you know, for the first few weeks, not so much now. But anyways, let's fast forward to 2019 because that's when Microsoft unveiled Project for the Web, the new version of Project, which was a re-platformed solution built on the Dataverse and designed to be extended with the Microsoft Power Platform. And then just a couple of short weeks ago at Microsoft Ignite 2023, it was announced that Project for the Web would be rebranded to Microsoft Planner in the coming year, so that's 2024. So those of you that are using Project Online or Project Server are naturally asking the question, with the rebranding of Microsoft Project for the Web to Microsoft Planner, will Microsoft Project be retired? And the short answer to that is no, it's not going to be retired, but at the same time, it's not going to benefit from any new features either. But it's still feature rich, and it's because of those features that many people continue to use Project Online. And you can see here that it supports everything from ideas capture to project and resource management to the tracking of risks, issues, and a lot more. So when Project Online users see Project for the Web in its standard basic guise, they think it's nothing more than a simplified scheduling engine, a lighter version of Project Desktop in the browser. But it's not. There's a lot more to it. I said earlier that Project for the Web was designed to be extended with the Microsoft Power Platform, and that's what we've done. And the result is the Wellington Accelerator Plus, which transforms the new project into an enterprise and PMO-ready solution. Here I've outlined just a few of the features that come as standard, and it can be extended further. It can also be customized to suit your specific requirements, and importantly, it only requires native Microsoft licensing, which you might already have in place. And the other great thing is that it actually shares much of the core licensing with Project Online. So again, you might already have some of those licenses in place. So the feedback we get from those that have transitioned from Project Online to the latest version of Project and the Accelerator Plus is that it's more intuitive. It's modern, it gets far more uptake than Project Online ever did. There's a bit more on the benefits of Project for the Web coming up, but if you're interested in the Accelerator Plus, then do check out our YouTube channel for a detailed overview. But for now, let's look towards the future. So a bit more on the benefits of Project for the Web over and above Project Online coming up, and then some suggestions on migration approach. I hope you like that DeLorean. Everybody laughed at me when I said I was going to drop that in, but I'm pretty pleased with the end result. Okay. So why would you consider migrating? Well, the new project is the future-proof version of that solution. You get access to the latest features and innovations. 
You can actually see the upcoming list of features by simply heading over to the Microsoft 365 Roadmap portal and doing a quick search or filter for project. It also features a much slicker user interface. It's more intuitive, it's shinier, and that makes it more accessible. It makes people want to use it. And we tend to see not only professional project managers and PMOs using Project for the Web, but subject matter experts. SMEs and accidental project managers are taking it up and starting to use it. Whereas with Project Online, due to its more complex nature, it was used primarily by what I would classify as the power users and not necessarily the wider project teams, but found it a bit too much. And in fact, it was quite often that I heard it likened to a sledgehammer and a crack and warmer, because again, it's a very complex enterprise solution. So on the final point to regard Project for the Web, it offers native integration with Microsoft 365 Groups, which makes it much easier to collaborate. And on that point, I'm pretty sure that by now, virtually everyone tuned into this session is using Microsoft Teams. And one of the regular asks we get from Project Online users is around Teams integration. But unfortunately, it's not really an option, whereas Project for the Web was built with better collaboration, team integration in mind. So again, that's already set up, good to go. So whilst there was a big push for Teams over the last few years, especially because of a pandemic and remote working, this year has definitely been the year for AI. And back in November, Microsoft launched Copilot. And in 2024, integration with Planner is arriving. And again, Project for the Web is going to be rebranded into Planner in the coming year. Ultimately, what does this mean? Well, Copilot is going to make your life easier. It's going to make the life of PMOs, project managers, and anyone that's involved in projects that little bit simpler. And I said this earlier, Project Online, whilst it's not going anywhere, it's not going to get any new functionality either. So if Teams or Copilot integration is something you're wanting to pursue, you'll need to start thinking about moving to the latest version of Project. And just a few more points on the benefits of Project for the Web over and above Project Online before we take a quick look at the available options for migration. So something that I've already mentioned is that the latest version, especially when paired with a Power App, does provide a more joined view. And it's kind of personified here through the screenshot. And if any of you have already used Dynamics 365, you will see that it looks very familiar because it's again all built on the same platform. A couple of additional quick wins. So firstly, you might be familiar with the notion of EPTs and enterprise project types and project online and the SharePoint workflows that you can then layer on top to provide some level of governance. Now, whilst they're functional, they are a tiny bit clunky, I would say. And yes, whilst they might provide the end user with a bit of guidance around what's needed at what particular stage of the life cycle, if you want somebody to complete a checklist at the end of a stage gate, they've got to go and find the corresponding PDP. So again, there's a lot of button clicks involved, whereas in Project for the Web, the workflows are based on Power Automate and they're interactive. And you can see an example of a checklist that's linked to a specific stage gate on the screen right now. And depending on the project type, the stage and so on, we can easily define different checklists, different sets of approvers, it's all configurable. But the key message here is that it's a much cleaner approach to ensuring that people are working in a consistent way and the governance is being applied. Now, apart from that, and, and I think this is maybe one of the biggest wins for me, is that you don't have to navigate to a separate project site to access things like raid logs and documents. In the Accelerator Plus Power App, everything's in one place and you can report on any of the data that you're capturing. So whether you're using custom lists or custom fields, it doesn't matter, you can report on everything. And in a nutshell, it's simply a much more joined up experience for the end user. And overall, I'd say that Project for the Web does offer a number of benefits over and above Project Online. And whilst currently from a scheduling perspective, it's definitely a bit lighter, the gap is closing. And I can guarantee that based on some of the information that I've, uh, I've got behind the scenes. So let's now take a step back and assume that you are looking to move from Project Online to Project for the Web. What options are there? Well, there are three high level approaches. Firstly, you decide that you want a fresh start and you're not looking to bring across any legacy data or outdated configuration. You essentially want to declutter and start from a blank slate. Well, in this case, it's really quite easy. The legacy data stays in Project Online Although you might bring across a handful of projects manually, 
This is, I would say, by far the easiest approach to transitioning, and it really does help reduce complexity and risk. Now, let's move on to option number two. And in this scenario, you know where you want to get to, but you want to take small steps. So you might decide to continue managing in-flight initiatives in Project Online, but from a certain date, specify the new projects need to be initiated and managed in Project for the Web. With this approach, however, you are going to find yourself managing projects between two different solutions, but we can provide you with, uh, quite simply, an overarching consolidated view of the entire portfolio through Power BI. And I've got a live example of this, so if you'd like to take a look, please get in touch. And before moving on to option three, here's a uh, option 2.1, uh, we'll call it that. And that's where you could retain your schedules in Project Online, well, Project Professional, but move your PDPs, your governance frameworks, and your project site content to a power up like the Accelerator Plus. And we've actually got a customer that's uh, adopting this approach as I speak. And that's because they've got complex schedules. They don't really have an appetite to move them across to Project for the Web, but they do want to improve your overall user experience and take advantage of the wider benefits that the Power Platform provides. So that's something else you could quite easily consider. But if you don't want a greenfield implementation or have a hybrid setup, then there is the option to fully migrate from Project Online to Project for the Web. And there's a few ways in which we could look to do that. And on that note, we'd love to have a chat with you to get a better understanding of your situation, your objectives and any constraints that you're working within. So please scan the QR code that's being displayed on the screen or simply visit wellington.co.uk and request your free consultation to discuss your potential project online migration. And one of the team will then follow up and schedule in a session to discuss the different options that we would uh, recommend based upon your exact scenario. But on that page, we do also list wider considerations for you to think about when you're looking to migrate from project online. So again, do scan that QR code and do take a look. One point that I'm going to make, something that I've not already mentioned, so I did say earlier the project for the web is going to become planner. Yes, that's going to happen in late 2024. Even if you deploy project for the web now, it doesn't make any difference at all. All you will see in about a year or so is that Project for the Web is going to be rebranded into Planner. It's going to have zero impact. But look, moving on, I'd love to hear from you guys, and I'm sure you've got questions, so please get in touch. Drop your questions to me via baz.kinder at wellington.co.uk. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Just do a search for my name or scan that QR code. That'll take you directly to my profile. Whilst you are on LinkedIn, then please do find Wellington, do follow. We share a ton of content on that page. And lastly, do check out our YouTube channel. This video, amongst many others, do end up there. So again, go and take a look. And whilst you're there, please do subscribe and ding that notifications bell. But guys, I hope you found this useful and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.